start. So um, here we go. So uh, welcome again, everybody. Um, we're extremely happy to profit of the Abraham uh, peace agreement between um, the Emirates, Bahrain, and Israel, and to profit also of the current situation with the global pandemic all around the, glo the globe. Uh, and we are honored to, um, to host Dr. Dominique Hennofer from um, uh, the Department of Earth Sciences at Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi. Um, so thank you very much for having accepted to participate. Um, Dr. Dominique Hennofer is an assistant professor at the Department of Earth Sciences in, at Khalifa University. Before joining uh, Khalifa University, he was a research teaching associate at the Petroleum Institute in Abu Dhabi, studying Jurassic Cretaceous and conventional reservoirs in co cooperation with Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. Prior to moving to Abu Dhabi, he was a lecturer in sedimentology at Heidelberg University in Germany, and his research interests generally lie in carbonate sediments and buildups and their stratigraphical and paleoenvironmental interpretation. Dominique holds a postgraduate degree, a diploma, in geology from Karlsruhe Institution of Technology in Germany, and a Doctor of Science in Geology and Paleontology from Heidelberg Institute in University in Germany. So, um, Dominique, the podium is yours. So, uh, thank you very much, first of all, Nicolas, for um, uh, introducing me, but also uh, thank you very much for um, uh, asking me to, um, to, um, to speak at your department. This is an absolute honor to me, um, especially to be one of the first uh, scientists to, um, uh, to do this in, 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 uh, in Israel from this part of the world. So um, I'm absolutely excited to do this. And therefore I chose the uh, topic to be a little bit more um, broad or introductionary to, um, to highlight some maybe um, parallels that we have in our geology because we're not far away and we uh, share the same plate more or less when you, uh, when you ignore the transform fault in your country. But in general, uh, we're very closely related uh, geologically. So um, yes, therefore I will uh, um, talk today about the stratigraphy of Abu Dhabi and uh, then some uh, organic matter accumulations and what, what controls them uh, throughout the Mesozoic area, era, pardon. Oops, okay. So I would like to start the talk uh, broad with a nice uh, satellite image. Um, and you can see the outline of, um, of the UAE. And the reason why I chose this, this picture to start is, uh, is basically it shows you a lot of information what the what the geology of of this uh, of the Gulf region um, uh, has to offer. Uh, first and foremost, because we don't have any uh, vegetation that that hinders um, um, the view from space even. So this is um, this is the the general overview that we can do already from the satellite image. Uh, we have obviously a quite extensive desert. Um, in, in the UAE that's extending towards um, Saudi Arabia. I will just put my laser pointer on. Um, capital Abu Dhabi, that's where I'm based. Uh, the largest city is uh, Dubai. And um, Abu Dhabi is making um, the majority of the, of the area. Uh, the Abu Dhabi Emirate is the majority of the area of the UAE. It's basically the border somewhere between Abu Dhabi and, uh, uh, and uh, Dubai and everything south and west of that uh, belongs to the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. So that's why um, most um, production and so on that all uh, is, is based and, and centered in, in, in Abu Dhabi. Um, on the opposite side of the Gulf, uh, we can see some nice uh, mountain, mountain ranges. That's the um, collision zone, obviously, with the uh, Eurasian plate. And on our side, uh, we also have this curved uh, origin. Um, these are the Hajar or UAE Oman mountains. And um, so they are quite red in color. That's the um, Semael Ophiolite. It's the um, oceanic crust and upper mantle that has been abducted on top of the, um, on top of the um, Arabian plate uh, and is outcropping now. 
to click. Oh, yes. So if, we, if you superimpose a geological map of the UAE on top of this uh, satellite image, you can see it's a very um, chaotic uh, geological surface map. Uh, there are the mountain ranges are on the right and um, everything else is basically covered in, in all kind of uh, new sediments, um, recent sediments from uh, Holocene and, uh, and Pleistocene times. So when we zoom into the uh, Abu Dhabi Emirate, um, basically we see exactly this. We have the, uh, the coastal um, deposits. These are Pleistocene and, and, and recent uh, evaporites and uh, recent carbonates, oolites and so on. And then everything Aeolian in the whole um, rest of the rest of the Emirate. Why I'm uh, putting, why I'm explaining this is basically we don't have any outcrops um, in Abu Dhabi. So we have a small outcrop here uh, and a little bit here. These are um, uh, Xenozoic and then Jabal Maleha is a little bit further. The, the picture that was taken from before that's up here. There's a little bit of Cretaceous outcropping, but that's already in the Emirate of Sharjah. So um, basically, we don't have any outcrops, and all the information that that um, that I'm presenting that is known is basically from core. Uh, luckily, there is a lot of core, countless um, meters of core, probably. And um, oh, this way, no, this, and. Um, we have um, uh, obviously a very good understanding of the subsurface. Uh, this is a um, yeah, cross section, uh, east-west, uh, spanning the whole Abu Dhabi Emirate and the UAE. And this is not an error. This is actually the actual, this is the actual cross section. It's uh, pretty simple. Um, it's relatively um, yeah, well stratified, let's say. And um, as you can see, we have the um, the basement, uh, the basement rocks. There are some some faults, and then we have the uh, uh, Paleozoic, uh, mostly Permian um, sediments. But these are already very deep. These are uh, ten thousand meters towards the west, and about six to seven thousand meters in the in, uh, in the in the east, and six to seven thousand meters in the west, and. Uh, all the rest that comes above is uh, Mesozoic and uh, obviously also Xenozoic. So we have a relatively thick uh, sedimentary cover, um, which uh, has to be uh, explained. Why do we have this and why does it look so undisrupted? The last thing I would like to uh, show here on the right is um, uh, the faults, a little bit of compressional features that's actually related to the orogeny. Uh, collision zone with uh, with the Eurasian uh, plate as well as the the ophiolite, but I think we we, we scratch on this uh, later a little bit. Okay, so to explain the thick sedimentary cover, I would like to briefly take you to the uh, a, a quick uh, tour in time, um, uh, looking at uh, paleogeographic uh, reconstructions. So I circled um, uh, the UAE, or basically. Um, the area, the general area uh, in the in the pink in the pink circle, that is at the um, that's from the Upper Triassic, and as we as we zoom um, towards younger times, we can see it's uh, it's passive continental margin on the former um, Pangean or uh, eastern eastern continent or uh, eastern um, passive continental margin of Pangaea. Uh, which is then breaking up in the um, throughout the Mesozoic or the early Mesozoic, and uh, is um, Africa is, is separating and we're drifting north northwards. However, the let's uh, finish here in the Upper Cretaceous. Um, I left the traces of the old positions uh, still on the on the on the on the slides. Um, what we can see is that we're basically uh, drifting northwards, but we have always, uh, the whole area has always been um, submerged underwater and uh, been a relatively un-influenced un, um, um, uh, passive continental margin. The um, location of, of Israel is roughly circled and in, in the, uh, roughly marked in the white circle. As you can see, this is all the, the, the same system. So you may, you may uh, be very familiar with the several uh, formations, although they may have different names. 
Um, yes, the last thing on this slide I'd like to uh, highlight is the, uh, the trace northwards is always within uh, um, relatively uh, low latitudes, um, low southern latitudes and low northern latitudes. So we're kind of uh, all the time looking at the, at the tropical um, setting on the, on, on, a flooded, uh, on the flooded shelf carbonate. And um, so this is the stratigraphic um, section. This is from the British Geological Survey. They've made a big, they've uh, been commissioned to do a big study in the early 2000s. And uh, this is their results. This is um, chronostratigraphically not exactly up to date anymore in some areas, but uh, it's still the, the best um, uh, um, um, yeah, connection, uh, the best, um, um, yeah, com uh, connect. Mm, what's the word? Best the uh, best solution that we have. Oh, sorry. Um, so what you can see here on the top, uh, we have Abu Dhabi uh, subdivided in in three uh, in three areas: western, central, and southeastern. Uh, this is down to different um, oil oil fields, and also some um, some oil fields have different. Where you, it used to be different companies, and they used to use different names for 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 um, lithological formations. So, so this is all um, a the best synthesis uh, that that it is now um, available for this. As you can see, the uh, Dubai um, formations they are more or less uh, similar in name, but somewhere that they look they look differently. This is uh, purely uh, to the fact that uh, Dubai has a different um, oil company and they've used uh, different names. Uh, sometimes it's it's synced, of course, but you can still uh, you can still find um, um, different 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 uh, yeah, terminology. The biggest difference uh, between Abu Dhabi um, and the rest of the Emirates is actually when you're looking at the outcrop um, the outcrop formation on the right. Um, since there is a lot of uh, information from subsurface uh, cores, but very little from actual outcrops. And that there are some outcrops; they're actually uh, quite good. Um, these are not very well understood. Um, how they obviously they have been also tectonically modified slightly, but um, they're also not very well um, subdivided. So basically, a lot of people in our department are working on this. Um, but generally, when you're looking from the uh, post Carboniferous, we uh, obviously uh, have the deposition of a lot of uh, carbonate uh, rocks, uh, dolomitized uh, of the older ones, and then the uh, Mesozoic is relatively, is relatively uh, well preserved in terms of uh, diagenesis. Um, obviously with some uh, high AT in uh, uh, terrain, but Generally, the the, uh, the succession is um, uh, dominated by a uh, slow subsidence uh, through most of the lower lower Mesozoic, and um, then interrupted in the upper uh, Cretaceous by the um, first formation of the uh, ophiolite, um, and then um, the load on on top of the plate and the abduct the final abduction. So in the north uh, east, that obviously created some gaps in the stratigraphy towards the east. Uh, but in Western Abu Dhabi, we're relatively unaffected by this, and that's where I'm uh, placing my uh, my examples for um, for today. Um, during the Cretaceous, as uh, during the Mesozoic, and especially in the Cretaceous, uh, we can see a relative diversification of the of the carbonate uh, sediments, uh, which means we are we, we go away from this uh, layered um, um, carbonate shelf uh, more towards um, low-lying or like shallow marine carbonates and so-called intra-shelf basins that are starved uh, inside from uh, around from a surrounding uh, shallow water carbonates. And this is uh, it's in the cross section earlier. It looked relatively uh, homogeneous. But uh, the closer we're looking inside, the um, obviously the more um, the more complex it gets, and it's uh, hard to um, hard to um, let's say believe that um, a such a wide carbonate uh, shelf could be as homogeneous as a, as a often postulated layer cake. So it's a little bit more complex than that. So when 
to understand the carbon, uh, the, the organic uh, matter or the carbon uh, deposition on the on the platform, we have to basically look at these intershelf basin. And um, I've now put in the um, the three main ones for the Mesozoic. Um, I've put in this this slide uh, from uh, Flasenkamp uh, from 2015, who basically worked for the um, onshore oil company here for a long time and had all the subsurface data to publish this. So the, um, the oldest um, intra-shelf basin, which is the least developed, is a very um, um, subtle basin. We don't see uh, what we will see later with uh, shallow water, with, with reef buildups and, and, and organic matter, um, deep marine sediments. This is a very shallow uh, basin, the, the so-called uh, Rupal Khali uh, basin in brown. Um, this is obviously larger than just the UAE. This is stretching uh, also large parts of Saudi Arabia. Um, that is Upper Jurassic in time. And the next one, so the uh, Cenomea, sorry, the Aptian um, Bab Basin is, is in purple visible here. And you can see it's stretching um, across the Gulf, uh, half of uh, Qatar and onshore um, Abu Dhabi. And uh, the last one in blue and green is the uh, Shilev Basin. That is a very extensional um, um, intershelf, intershelf basin with uh, a hint of a seeming connection towards the, the Tethys here, towards the, the Neo-Tethys, towards the southeast, at uh, the northeast, um, but relatively extensive um, basins. So these are, these are that's, that's our, our setting when we look at um, uh, into more detail into this um, into this um, stratigraphy. So this on the right, um, the, the figure on the right bottom, you can see um, this is the uh, Bab Basin from uh, or Lower Aptian, Barimian Aptian. You can see the oil fields uh, marked in green and the extent of the, the basin. And uh, the oil fields are obviously uh, limited to this basin. So this is a hint that this is where the organic uh, matter has been deposited and then the oil fields uh, represent the, the modern um, anticlinal antiform structures. Okay, so when you go back to the um, sort of graphic uh, chart, uh, we can see these three basins um, also in, in the context of time. So the lower one, the lowermost uh, one in the, in the upper Jurassic um, is, is made up of the, of the uh, source rock, which is uh, the Duhan formation is a relatively um, deep marine uh, carbonate. And then reservoirs are the Arab formation, Qatar formation and Assad formation. These are a very, very shallow um, facies, uh, oolites, um, um, also lagoonal, lagoonal um, deposits, and they're capped by the heat formation. That's a very extensive anhydrite. Uh, it's, ba it's basically a, um, um, the drying out of this, of this basin uh, due to repeated um, sea, level, sea level fluctuations and uh, the capping of each, uh, of each level of, of carbonates with, uh, with the anhydride layer. So that's, I, I will not go into this in more detail because this is um, um, <clears throat> a relatively, <clears throat> excuse me, a relatively um, simple, um, uh, simple setting. So um, therefore, I, uh, yes, oh yeah, I forgot that basically we have a, a very low angle ramp uh, in this setting. So a lot of small sea level changes can make a big change in, in coastline shift. And that's where we get these uh, uh, repeats of, of the, of the um, Arab uh, Hif um, system. If we look a little bit uh, further up or younger, um, this is probably the most famous um, system in the, in the UAE in terms of uh, organic matter deposition. It's the uh, Shuaiba Reservoir. However, I will not at all talk about any reservoirs. It will only talk about the, uh, source, the source formations. And, um, the development of these of these source rocks have been uh, they, or they have developed in 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 this um, middle uh, basin that we saw earlier. This is so-called Bab Basin, and this is the first time where we get this uh, diversification where where these basins are, are rimmed 
by uh, by rudist uh, build up. So the rudists are able to grow and keep up with a with a with a sea level um, increase and create this uh, starved basin in the middle. When we look at uh, this, has been uh, for economic reasons extremely well extremely well studied. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, sequence stratigraphic uh, um, studies have been done, and also chemo stratigraphic. So I will just uh, highlight a few a few of these findings um, for the uh, goal to understand how the organic matter has been deposited. What why why was it deposited there? And we can see uh, in the top Varemian, uh, in the upper Varemian, um, the stra uh, strata is relatively is relatively uh, flat. We don't have any uh, any any buildups. And then we 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 uh, towards the um, lowermost Appian, we have a relatively strong sea level sea level rise, which creates um, which creates topography on on the eastern and the western. Uh, flank with the, in these um, first um, um, oyster or bivalve uh, rich layers and also some um, uh, microbial lights and finally um, the, the rudest uh, the rudest um, bioherms or patch, patch reefs or platform however you want to call them and uh, in the middle of them uh, in this in this basin this is uh, obviously a very highly productive area remember this has been deposited in tropical uh, times also at times of probably high um, uh, high temperature, high CO2 in the Aptian uh, at the time of uh, oceanic anoxic event 1A at this at this uh, this time. So uh, this is basically where this so-called BAP member, this is a part of the Shua, Lower Shuaiba formation, um, has been has been deposited. However, when we look at the uh, chrono uh, stratigraphic um, approach um, when we are trying to connect uh, carbon isotope uh, records together from the basin, it becomes uh, so, so carbon isotope records as a brief as a brief um, uh, recap uh, are reflecting um, the the ratio of light to heavy uh, carbon isotopes in the atmosphere seawater uh, system. So when the uh, values are negative, that means there has been an introduction of more um, light material to the, to the system. This can be from volcanic volcanism. This can be from uh, from organic matter, let's say, um, or heavy. That means we are removing organic matter, and so the resulting or the, the remaining um, ratio is is more heavy. So this is the uh, record, relatively expanded record of OE one A across the BAP basin. And uh, we can see that the, um, the C3 segment, so this is the lightest, this is um, time equivalent with the uh, postulated uh, volcanic event during this time, or, or, or methane release, or, or something along this line. And um, this is the start of our uh, major sea level, of a, of a major sea level rise. And this major sea level rise has, uh, has um, promoted the, the rudest uh, platforms to, to keep up. Um, with this um, um, with this rise and creating this creating this basin so this is a relatively straightforward um, um, explanation how we can um, how we can create a, a large amount of, of organic matter in 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 the time because obviously this time has been um, has been a, a greenhouse um, and during the uh, during the, the, the increase here of the of the of the carbon isotope um, uh, records, this um, is basically the the equivalent of the of the large burial of organic matter also in oceanic basins. So remember, we are on the, on the platform here. Um, so we can explain this relatively relatively um, simply that these are um, this is one this is one event. The the organic matter deposition comes with the uh, with the um, the global turnover of the of the of the carbon system during that time, and obviously um, that is provoked also by with the um, the sea level rise and the high nutrients and so on during this time. Okay, but the the main uh, the main part of my of my presentation 
is actually um, the last uh, or the youngest of the Mesozoic um, uh, hydrocarbon systems. Um, that is the uh, Shilev Basin. So this Shilev Basin has not been uh, studied too much in terms of um, exploration. This is just uh, it's uh, it's it's not it's not uh, a target at the moment, or it's not so easily targetable than the than the Shuaiba or the Arabs. However, um, this is um, a very interesting one because it offers a lot of uh, opportunity, and because of that, I will go in. I will put my focus into the uh, into the explanation of the Shalev Basin. So the Shalev Basin um, is the um, second order cycle that follows the uh, Shuaiba. So the Shuaiba, at some point, uh, the sea level drops, we get the uh, emerging, we have karstification, and then the, as the sea level rises, we get uh, the Nacha Umar formation, which are marls or shales. Um, on top of this, and they are forming the seal, obviously, of the lower of the lower play. But uh, they start. They, this is the new cycle for the for the next uh, large scale uh, second order uh, sea level rise. So from the Nahu Umar, we're going into a more uh, carbonate rich uh, sediment, uh, and we also de develop these rudest platforms around. However, uh, different uh, uh, rudest families in this time. Okay, so a little bit more um, on the geometry of this because this will be uh, important uh, later. Um, so the more clean carbonates uh, uh, overlying the Nacha Umar are the so-called Maudud and Shalev formations. These are the, uh, they, they extend uh, from the Albion into the Turonian as we know now. Um, and these are the organic rich um, basin equivalents of the surrounding Mishrif uh, formations or in Oman they are called uh, uh, Nate. Maybe this is a um, um, this is also some some uh, other uh, more internationally known um, uh, term for the same. Um, we see that we have the uh, the basin relatively large stretching across the more or less onshore and offshore uh, UAE with a assumed connection towards the new Tethys towards the north. And um, the left is a, oh sorry, the left, the west, the western part is a relatively well-developed um, uh, rudist uh, buildup, where, whereas the, um, the eastern part towards the open ocean are more, um, uh, less, less developed, um, um, yeah, lagoonal facies, but also um, uh, shoal facies. This has some some part uh, is to do with the with the ophiolite and with uh, with flexure because um, at this time, especially towards the upper Cenomanian, uh, as we can see this here, we get the or in the Turonian in this case, uh, we we start to get some erosion from the from the west because of the um, the, the the overburden of the um, of the of the ophiolite and a rebound effect on further in further in the plate. Okay, but why am I putting this uh, so much emphasis into this? It gives us uh, as a uh, from a sedimentological from a geochemical point of view, it gives us an amazing opportunity to study what happened in the in on there and also in the world's oceans uh, in great detail because um, the, ba the Shilev Basin um, Cenomanian Upper Albion, Upper Albion to to Turonian um, is up is stretching up to 270 meters of more or less continuous uh, sediments, um, and you can see here in the bottom we have uh, yeah this is um, laminated organic rich uh, with planktic uh, foraminifera, um, then uh, chert layers from um, from uh, from uh, siliceous uh, plankton. And that's basically all the way up. So we have no no major major facies changes, and this is just a good um, a good opportunity to study what happened and why organic matter was deposited, or just to explain um, the the course of action uh, in in more detail. So the first study was just to get an overview, uh, because as I mentioned at the start, uh, the chemo uh, sorry, this the, the Chronostratigraphic 
graphy is not very well developed. Um, as a result, uh, that the, the companies didn't really care about time, they cared about uh, lithological units. So um, I was always debate whether which uh, unit is how old. And uh, at least for the Shalev Basin, we made a, a, an end to this. And uh, so this is the carbon isotope record is a relatively uh, neat uh, record that owing to the, to the nice preservation and to the continuous sediment. And uh, I would just like to highlight, um, we're basically looking at the upper portion of the Cenomanian. Um, there is uh, uh, bulk carbonate and uh, organic uh, carbon and also um, relatively thorough uh, biostratigraphy uh, done to this. So we know exactly where we, sorry, where we are in, in, in time, which is quite important. Um, a brief excursion, uh, on OAE2, because I will start mentioning this a few times in the in the next uh, few minutes, the um, OAE2 is one of uh, one of these um, um, proposed events where um, where we can see, judging by the carbon isotope positive excursion, that a lot of organic matter has been buried at the same time somewhere in the world's oceans, uh, resulting into this positive shift. And uh, this is uh, interpreted to be um, obviously is a highly productive time, high temperature, high PCO2, and also it coincides with uh, very, very high sea levels. So um, the major uh, flooding of the, of the Earth's um, continents, uh, just in, in brief. So this is a, co uh, this is a record from, from Italy. Um, and I will now show you a few of those uh, from, the, from the UAE. Um, if we want to put our single one into context, uh, this is uh, what, what, what is striking is that uh, in an east-west transect, we see that um, uh, naturally the more shallow, uh, the more shallow sections, they will have a, a slightly more, um, um, let's say chaotic or, or less, yeah, more chaotic um, uh, record. However, it's very well uh, correlatable. Uh, but what's really uh, striking is that in the late Cenomanian, we have this extremely prominent negative shift that is preceding uh, OE2. Uh, and uh, this is actually coinciding with the uh, deposition of uh, organic matter. So we don't have any, we don't have major uh, deposition of organic matter during OE2. We have it uh, in the late Cenomanian, um, most of it. So this is the, this was the, um, the outcome. So we wanted to look at this in much more detail. So we tried to, um, to understand this a little bit better by using two different uh, cores. Uh, one, which we will from now on call core J, that is in the depot center of the, of the basin that has a much thicker um, um, sedimentary succession. So they roughly uh, cover the same time or the same, um, yeah, more or less the same time. Uh, in the depot center of the, of the basin, uh, we have uh, about 60 uh, plus meters of, of sediment uh, from the more or less covering the upper Cenomanian uh, with a bit of the middle and a bit of the uh, lower Turonian. And just over 35 meters uh, in the more uh, south, which is more uh, proximal to the, to the coastline and also uh, um, less uh, further away from, from, from the actual uh, center of the basin. So um, we tried to understand this, uh, this uh, system. So this is basically um, the study to know how to link these, these sections together that we know what time correlates with what in which section. Um, now we would like to know how much time it is. So with, uh, uh, in, with a psychostatographic uh, approach uh, on the, uh, when you're working with core, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's nice because core have, have, has, been, has, been, has been photographed in a standardized way. And uh, since, these, since these rocks are very homogenous, but change in, the only change that you can see is the color change between laminated, dark, and more bioturbated. Uh, we thought it would be a good idea to, to, to apply, uh, if we could find some, some cycles during this, uh, during this. And uh, long story short, uh, in both cores, more or less, uh, they were 
more or less detectable and uh, we get a, 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 an interpreted 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 um, a duration of the of the negative event of roughly 500 to 600,000 years and the positive excursion um, around 200,000 years. Uh, this is um, roughly that that would uh, with a with a with the levels first and last occurrences of of our nanofossil record this uh, is uh, in line with this. However, if you're familiar with uh, studies on OA2, this is the time is relatively is shorter. So um, uh, a combined negative and positive uh, excursion is is relatively is is the is usually uh, postulated for 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 um, the OE2 in other sections of the world. So it's it it appears to be a little bit uh, short. But let's go back to the main main topic, uh, which is the organic matter. So we see in that section that in the more basinal section, the the deposition, not the production, but the actual what is left of of organic matter in our in our reservoir. Um, it's an unconventional, very tight reservoir. It's also not, uh, it's not, it has been not, it's, uh, it's not mature enough. So we have, we, we find uh, our, as ourselves lucky uh, for the purpose of science that we don't have so much migration of, of the organic matter. Um, obviously the oil company has a different opinion on that. But uh, so we can see in the depot center that we're increasing relatively gradually uh, and we have our main um, organic matter deposition around the positive uh, excursion in the latest Cinnamanian. In the more southern section, core A, uh, it appears that the, um, that the organic matter is starting relatively uh, abruptly at, at, at high um, percentages already, four or five percent, and then with some interruptions is continuous all the time. So with some kind of um, time lag between the southern and the northern uh, core. And that's just a hundred meters, a hundred kilometers away, uh, away uh, on this huge uh, shelf. So um, this is uh, one hint that, uh, that, that there's, some, there's, some, there's something that is not exactly um, um, time equivalent. Um, Yes, and the um, the actual organic matter also uh, changes the black area. This is the area of the of the very negative excursion. This is our this is more uh, algal uh, origin uh, organic matter, whereas um, in the red below we seemingly had a lower productivity and a higher um, um, Organic matter that's plant that's a plant based uh, plant based terrestrial based with a higher oxygen oxygen content. So when we look at uh, another another um, analysis, I'm just um, um, summarizing all the analyses, and then later we will end up into the into the into the synthesis of this. Uh, with the elements, uh, we can we are able to uh, to detect maybe some changes in in siliciclastic influx or the carbonate composition, but in this case, it's a relatively it's almost a pelagic setting. Uh, carbonate uh, is obviously at at uh, full. Uh, there is a slight decrease in carbonate in the middle of this um, um, highest organic matter uh, interval that's basically these are the radiolarian charts that are that are in so we, we don't we have a very very small almost uh, neglectable um, organic as uh, a siliciclastic siliciclastic influx and since this is a um, uh, very basinal um, facies it there's uh, the changes in the carbonate composition is not is not not so uh, visible here except on the top uh, here, this is stratigraphically higher. On the core J, this is actually then the low stand wedge um, um, sediments that are coming in, just for the for the record. However, element analysis uh, has another uh, benefit uh, when you're playing uh, redox sensitive um, elements against each other, or basically um, uh, enrichment factors of elements that can only be enriched in the sediment if they have been arriving in the in the sediment 
alongside with organic matter or with, or un, and then being stabilized there under reducing conditions. And um, since the core J is more, is the more basinal, although it is less, um, it, is, uh, it, it is apparently less uh, dark, uh, we have a much stronger um, um, uh, um, redox, redox uh, uh, signature in this, and the main signature is here in the in the negative along the negative excursion, which is um, in the um, middle to late uh, Cenomanian. And uh, obviously, every the whole basin is enriched in 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 these elements, as this is more or less an uh, an anoxic or like a disoxic basin throughout, but uh, uh, using these uh, elements, we can actually uh, see changes in in which um, yeah how uh, the, the the severity of or the of the uh, the lack of the oxygen. No, this is something on the side. I it looked like this. Okay, so to conclude, when we are putting all the um, all the information together. We can actually generate a relatively um, uh, clear picture on what has happened with this basin uh, between the middle and the late Cenomanian. So, um, and I've subdivided these uh, these time intervals uh, relatively into 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 four um, time intervals. So the first one is that the base of the of the Pure carbonates, they are not very organic rich. Uh, we don't have so much um, um, deposition of organic matter. We may have production, but the deposition uh, is not so uh, is not so so strong. We also have a, a lot of bioturbation, which in, infers there is uh, has been the more uh, frequent oxygen um, available at the seafloor. Um, but uh, needless to say, the um, since glycogen fluxes uh, has been already has been already low, so we can't really for sure say anything about uh, um, small sea level changes. Uh, moving up, this is now uh, one example of the of the most negative excursion uh, at the time of the highest uh, um, organic matter deposition. You can see also here by the color. Uh, field A is the uh, more proximal, more southern um, location. Uh, we have much higher or darker sediments, um, relatively stratigraphically older than in the more um, open uh, field J location, which is more north. So this suggests that um, having the increase in, in organic matter production and hence um, deposition, uh, we get the, the, the accumulation on the seafloor uh, in a diachronous way from uh, prograding from south to the north, um, probably uh, hinting towards uh, some restriction uh, um, cause in, uh, from field A uh, un until then um, also um, the more open sections are becoming uh, anoxic or even euxenic at the end. Um, and at that time, um, another hint for the increased productivity are these very prominent um, chert layers that are made up for, of of, uh, of uh, siliceous uh, plankton, uh, which basically take up uh, the whole the whole um, uh, chemical composition, the whole um, um, yeah, um, silicate from uh, biogenic silicate. Going into the actual positive excursion of uh, OE2, um, there are some uh, peculiar uh, things happening. So this this uh, this uh, draft here in, um, implies that we had high frequent sea level changes. Uh, this could be an option. Another option could be high frequent uh, redox changes uh, during that time. Um, so. That is that is something that uh, would require more more analysis, maybe also on organic matter, um, on biomarkers, maybe. However, uh, we have oxygenation of the seafloor during the um, during that peak time in the in the, in the uppermost uh, Cenomanian, um, from bioturbation to um, stratified or laminated uh, um, black uh, carbonates. 
so relatively uh, a time of a lot of uh, of a lot of um, of a lot of change that is uh, relatively high frequent. And finally, which is not covered in the um, southern field or core A, uh, this is the low stand uh, sedimentation that basically terminates the basin, uh, in, which uh, is uh, exemplified by a decrease here in, in, in carbonate, but also an increase in more um, uh, terrestrial plant material that that has been that has been uh, flowing into this basin again, and we're getting uh, this is the uh, lower Cenomanian, as uh, the lower Turonian, pardon. Um, uh, however, we do get some redox uh, markers or some some reducing conditions in from the redox markers, but this uh, may be a true um, uh, restriction related um, uh, uh, cause for this. Okay, to sum up, um, the two intra-shelf basins that I, that I have um, presented today uh, with the emphasis on organic matter, uh, they are relating not exactly the same. Uh, so the Bub Basin is apparently um, coeval through a, a sea level rise and the um, keeper or the, the, the keep up of the, of the shallow like the rudest buildups that are fringing this, um, creating this, uh, creating uh, um, a basin with uh, the deposition of organic matter, whereas the Chalave basin um, has also has a, is during a time of of high of high productivity. Um, however, uh, it it has not come um, in a in a synchronous way. So we have relative. Um, degree probably of, of restriction starting from the more um, this, uh, from the more proxica, uh, proximal uh, southern sections towards the uh, corridor in the north that opens up to the new Tethys. So this is a clear, um, this is a clear, clear indicator. Um, and we have uh, evidence for orbital influence um, in this because we have these high frequent changes and um, there may be a possibility that which I have not gone into uh, at all today, but that this negative and this positive excursion may be uh, uh, that it's debatable where this where this comes from. It could well be that this is uh, um, this is um, something that we can see in other sections as well. Um, but what we definitely what we definitely see is that the organic matter deposition has uh, basically not much to do with the actual. Um, uh, OAE, um, as this is um, uh, in the in the mid to late Cenomanian, and it also um, has the similar uh, or other other plays in the in the world, such as the Eagle Ford, for instance, have exactly this, show the same. So, this is my quick overview on the stratigraphy of Abu Dhabi and the organic matter, and uh, thanks for your attention, and I'm happy to answer questions that may come. Thank you, Dominique. Really enlightening talk. Um, and I open the, the podium for questions. Um, since I don't see everybody, so just jump in or write it in the chat. Um, yeah, Beverly, please. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, thank you. It's nice to get a tour, tour of your region and see the geology. Um, is there a lot of uh, cooperation between the commercial side and their collections and materials and the more scientific academic side? Yes, uh, it is. Um, it's a very dynamic environment concerning this, uh, meaning I've been here now for five years and I have seen excellent collaboration and uh, complete silence. So we are currently in a stage where we are uh, we have um, we have uh, submitted um, several uh, proposals, and um, the company has shown a willingness to to share. So in brief, the uh, collaboration is 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 there is is possible and um, generally um, well developed. So we had, for instance, this uh, all this study has been. Uh, has been um, has been conducted with the um, um, uh, the general uh, the generous um, offering of of Atnog Abu Dhabi National Oil Company to 
uh, for me to go to study uh, all the course, to sample, to publish. So this has been a, a very uncomp uh, very yeah, relatively uncomplicated um, um, undertaking once the, once the agreement has been uh, finalized. So uh, and I'm hoping that next year we will I have uh, uh, new um, uh, new core material that I can that I can work with. I've now requested the Jurassic. Uh, lower Cretaceous um, core. We'd be happy to share some Jurassic material. <laughs> Excellent. Good. I mean, so, to take from you since we don't have much. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll see so what we have to trade. They are relatively uh, cooperative. It, uh, the, yes. I mean, I have had a lot of uh, uh, meetings in vain as well, but. Uh, Generally, it uh, it is possible to to find uh, open ears for uh, for this, and then and then it's possible after after a bit of paperwork. Well, perhaps the new agreement can open that uh, possibility. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, I think this this is a complete uh, game changer. Um, there have been also structural changes uh, with the university uh, before. It was. Uh, uh, um, a subsidiary of, of, of the oil company. Now we are private under the Ministry of Education. So this has disrupted collaboration uh, for, for a year or two, but we're basically now uh, reconnecting. So I think this is a general, even without the agreement, would have been a, per, a, a positive outlook. And I think this will give another push to, to collaborate. I'm pretty sure. Excellent. Um, there is a question from Aaron uh, Melikson. Hi, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Um, and I've been working also on organic matter and stratigraphy uh, in our area. And I wanted to ask, um, we, we don't have any organic deposition in the um, OET, OE2, uh, like in the Turonian yes. boundary. Uh, we do have deposition in the Dahlia formation, which is later on in the Turonian, which might be equivalent to what you showed in the, in the lower Turonian. And I wanted to ask if you know if the source of the organic matter in that area um, is more has to do with productivity and you know marine production or more of terrestrial organic matter, which you mentioned, but on another part of the section, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Do you have any? Do you see any of the the dominant calcium spheres or anything like that that goes together with the the facies, usually organic rich facies of that time? Yes, so um, I already in the meantime have uh, opened this. Uh, so this is a, this is a compilation from uh, from the uh, from the company's data. Uh, my interval that we looked at. I know this is now not very large, but basically we looked at sequences one to four, and um, this is the uh, this is the. Um, uh, the high stand, if you if you wish, uh, the transgressive to high stand um, equivalent of this of this basin. So this is the most of the of the bioclasts, if not almost all, are uh, calcium spheres. So this is a very um, this is this is the very high. This is basically what I've just shown. This is a, especially in this organic rich. This is a, a, seg, a sequence three, uh, two, three, and four. Um, then the, the the termination of that basin with the let's say if you wish the low stand uh, deposits um, and the increase of silicic uh, clastics, I don't have any info on on the so this would be this would correlate to um, someone in the Turonian. I would say. so someone after the earliest Turonian, <laughs> uh, because the earliest Turonian is still covered in the in the high in the in the in the in the basin of faces, and then on what what is on top? Unfortunately, I don't have uh, I don't have uh, any any data because this is. You find this facies also also earlier in the Canomanian with the calcifers or only in that later? No, no, no. The, it starts from the uh, upper uh, uppermost uh, Albion. Uh, throughout the whole Cenomanian. There is obviously some minor changes, uh, but the whole, the, the, the whole uh, succession is in more or less uh, um, um, planktic uh, forearms and mostly uh, calcium spheres. Okay, and uh, one more question, is that okay? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, of course. Um, we have a kind of an okay correlation between uh, organic uh, preservation and the position and the maximum flooding surfaces as identified in the Arabian plate, uh, Hakan mm -hmm. al-Kanani or works by Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you see that in that area, correlation between the MFSs and, uh, and organic deposition? Um, I, I have to say, in this case, I have to, um, I'm not fully familiar with their, where they placed their, their levels because we had a little bit of um, uh, the, um, chronostratigraphically, um, that didn't fully fit with our uh, biostrat. Mm. So I was not really sure where their levels in this area would correlate to our our biostrat. So there. So in this case, I would have to actually look this up. But I, I, I can I can find this. I, I can I can find both uh, both documents and then uh, put them together. But right. uh, yeah. it looks uh, from it. So generally, what what is uh, what is um, so this we have here the whole the whole Cenomanian, and yeah. it will most likely uh, fall, the MFS will most likely fall into somewhere in the, in the late Cenomanian. I just, uh, this, but I'm not sure exactly um, where. Thank you. But if, if you want, please, uh, if you drop me in, an, an email, you for, uh, then we can, uh, I, I, can, I can find this out. If, if you I, will, I will. I also write, I have some questions on how you did the, the cyclostratigraphy, which is, you know, always problematic in this uh, earlier time. Yes. Yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, I will ask you. Okay, happily, happily, very happily. Thank you very much. Does uh, somebody else have a question to Dominique? I will, uh, I have another question that is more on the general background. Uh, I've noticed that in the section, it, you have a big hiatus in the Oligocene. You, uh, can you expand about this? Do you know um, anything about that? Um, is this the uh, start of the Zakros orogeny? So uplift, possibly. This is a this is a, a this is a guess. Um, <clears throat> it would just fit more or less from the. I mean, obviously, it's also uh, uh, this event is 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 uh, placed here uh, roughly. I have, yeah, I haven't really worked in this area. So we have um, in the in the west we have the um, we have these formation. Um, it's basically uh, the entire Eocene and uh, Oligocene. I have recently worked on uh, the Upper Rus and the Daman in terms of uh, uh, to trying to understand geometries there on the on the on the shelf and. Um, what and on, I'm not sure because we don't have any time control and these are very let's say adventurous uh, suggestions on different uh, time levels so I'm not exactly sure where the Asmari information um, slots into this area which here would correlate with the uh, with the Oligocene so hiatus I would say uh, orogeny related early orogeny however uh, the time, this is uh, not known at all, this area. Can you say something about uh, the reservoirs and the traps? Where is oil and gas found in those basins? In the, uh, in the Mesozoic, you mean? Yeah. Yes. So I just put in this uh, slide. So this is now the example of the, uh, of the uh, Shuaiba uh, Aptian. Uh, reservoir. So um, maybe I find a slightly bigger picture. But you can see uh, from uh, from Baremian into 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 Aptian uh, with different with different. Um, so we have these uh, in these in these basins that are developing. Then from the early Aptian, um, all the green areas here. These are all the these are all the the the. Um, so first of all, the the reservoirs are. Uh, restricted to these intra-shelf basins because these are organic rich uh, and then the actual uh, oil fields they are then again limited to within this basin on 
uh, some antiform structures. Uh, mostly, these are all uh, diapere related um, foldings. Um, so this and this is basically through how throughout. So they are uh, all the all the the levels, all the uh, um, yeah different um, um, levels of 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 the, these basins that are stacked on top of each other are basically following the same uh, syncline anticline uh, structures that are usually north south uh, usually north south uh, trending. So the compression comes from the east. And what is the rock type for the reservoirs? Uh, these are most mostly uh, uh, carbonate. Uh, uh, like for this, in this one, these are these are uh, bioplastic uh, carbonate uh, basinal uh, facies, um, planktonic planktonic bioclasts, um, some uh, siliciclastic um, uh, to it as well. Not so familiar with the with the uh, with the uh, Schreiber or Bab uh, formation, but the um, the reservoir of the Chalave basin is purely carbonate, um, purely uh, carbonate, uh, basically this. So you can see um, it's um, relatively dark uh, with carbonate mud and calcium spheres and some forams uh, in between. So there it's. Um, Yeah. Okay, thank so you. relatively carbonate rich. Okay, thank you. Is there are there more questions to Dominic? I have another question that is again a background question. Please, I'm an ignorant uh, geophysicist, so that's no problem. <laughs> you can basic answers. Um, we, love, we love you anyway. <laughs> um, you show a, a consistent uh, constraint of internal basins on that huge uh, margin. Why are they? Why are they consistently constrained? Why, what is constraining the those basins? Yeah. So these are uh, is believed that uh, there are some uh, some reactivated faults in the subsurface that. Mm, so basically, in Abu Dhabi subsurface. Now this is now very schematic, but uh, the, the the base the basement rock uh, has been uh, has undergone extension and and uh, and compaction and the for, um, and the former extensive uh, faults uh, now in the compressional system are basically reactivated uh, uh, in the other way, and uh, so these basins um, these basins are thought that um, that are on top of each other because their their boundary their margins are basically slight differences in in level uh, related to these to these faults. But the main uh, but the main let's say uh, geo uh, geographic uh, extent is probably also uh, environmentally driven because um, the shallow or the carbonate, like let's say, rudest uh, rudest uh, growth will um, will uh, will um, obviously start or basically go along the, the 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 margin and maybe also from from the back and then basically naturally closing in some some area in the middle. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, it's generally um, related to these um, uh, Paleozoic faults. Rifting, basically. Yes, exactly. The rifting signatures. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there more questions from people? Okay. Well, um, well in any case, we are far beyond uh, a little bit of the time limit of the um, of the seminar. So uh, Dominic, again, I would like to thank you very much. Um, I sincerely hope that you will be able to cross the Arabian continent to visit our art crops. Definitely, yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> and we definitely are uh, willing to go there. <laughs> yes. And yes, uh, yes. if you if you wish, and if you want if you want to be interested, I can put you also in the communication for the seminars of our department. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
And with Thank this, ah, it will be a pleasure for us. Actually, the next one is going to be in Russia. So we're going to uh, tropical, uh, yeah, we're going to Russia. So, thank you. Dominique, can I ask you some general questions? Uh, the yes. other few minutes? Yes, of course. Yeah. Just can you tell us a little bit about how the, the university system works there? Do you, are you many, I, you have a big department, uh, you know, just yes. a general background on what, what's there? Yes, so, um, so we have a recently um, formed uh, Khalifa University uh, as, as one entity. This is only a few years old, I think 2016, 17 formally. Um, before we were, um, uh, as the Petroleum Institute, part of uh, oil company as the as a as the academic side to train uh, students, international and local students, to be eventually uh, geoscientists, engineers, whatever. So the newly formed um, um, university has. Uh, I think our department, we have about 10, 10 something faculty and uh, we have a, a um, undergrad uh, program that's um, slowly fading out uh, called Petroleum Geoscience. Um, and we have uh, a new one starting in a few days um, called Earth and Planetary Science um, or Earth Science uh, as, the, as the program. So we are currently declining in, in undergrad students for the petroleum program, uh, just by demand. Um, however, we also have a um, master and PhD program um, in um, currently still petroleum geoscience, but will be earth, earth, planet, earth science as well. The student numbers on undergrad, I would say 100 plus. The, um, Graduate students and PhD students, uh, graduate students, maybe 20 PhD, maybe currently, we just started uh, one year and a half ago, so maybe 10 PhD, 10, 15 PhD students. So this is the general, um, the, the general, and the, uh, academically, uh, we're, we're following, this is uh, modeled on a North American um, undergrad, postgrad um, program. So this is accredited by these, yeah, international North American type. You also have people that are going more towards the environmental fields. Yes. So basically, uh, none of our this this is the 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 like say a funny uh, part. So there are very few uh, faculty at the department that actually work in in um, in petroleum uh, research. So. Um, maybe some with the diagenetic and uh, and the reservoir characteristics but anybody else is is actually um like in my case i'm interested in changes of of the environment obviously this goes if you analyze uh, organic matter you can basically give the number this is the same analysis it's just a different uh, yeah half different half sentence in the end um so that's what most most of us do, and uh, so therefore the the change um, had to come because it's it's much less people are actually interested. The uh, oil company is not uh, willing to take many new geoscientists in. I think the country is not as few hundred kilometers uh, with a relatively simple uh, subsurface. So I'm 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 not I'm not surprised when we don't have to start fifty new geologists every year there. So I think that's that's why that's the reason that there's a decline in this and uh, the the drive to more um, um, ecological uh, topics has has majorly kicked off recently, and also uh, with this um, um, space center new, newly established, um, we hope to get some some students that are also interested. We have hired faculty now that come in January in a few days. Uh, that are planetary uh, uh, scientists. So basically, we try to kick off uh, a more away from the hydrocarbon um, track. Yeah, because none of us are, is really sad about that because we don't, uh, again, didn't really work in this, strictly speaking. The geophysicists are very strongly linked, obviously, to the company because of the 
uh, materials they will get. But uh, that's, yeah. Dominique, uh, there is also Professor Ilana Berman Frank. Uh, she is the head of the school that she wanted to say something. Great, thank you. Hi, hi, Dominic. I want to first thank you very much for uh, opening the, bridging the gaps here. And uh, um, yeah, it's a privilege and uh, giving us some uh, interesting information. And the questions, the last few questions were really actually uh, questions that I also wanted to yeah. find out more about your university. And uh, I'll be happy for uh, any kind of... Uh, connections that are formed between faculty. And like Nicholas said, uh, you are welcome to circulate our seminar list amongst the, uh, mm -hmm. the colleagues as well uh, Great. Great. at your university. And uh, we do hope that uh, once the pandemic is over, uh, we will be able to have actual uh, uh, exchanges. So yes. <laughs> physical exchanges. No. Absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, thank you. Yeah. And no, thank, thank you, you again. Thank you again for uh, uh, taking the challenge here. No, thank you very much. And I think this is a, is a good uh, opportunity. Um, um, and there is a good opportunity to, uh, to, um, to promote um, collaboration and uh, exchange um, coming up, especially since we are also not really uh, petroleum uh, focused uh, anymore, uh, or not even officially anymore. So uh, yes, I think uh, there is there is good potential, and especially uh, yeah, this student exchange and uh, field. We have good even field uh, field uh, locations are um, they're not very well studied. That's why I'm. Uh, Hiking the mountains quite regularly, but these, uh, but uh, there are we have some good outcrop. Obviously, Oman is uh, admittedly far far better outcrop situation just because they have much more mountains. But um, um, also the the Mesozoic um, and and crustal uh, rocks or or, or um, um, like mantle the the mantle exposed mantle rocks in in, in the northern Emirates. Uh, these are spectacular uh, outcrops. So this is um, I'm sure. Um, once there is a possibility to join, we can we can uh, uh, arrange like infrastructure or anything. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, everybody. And uh, well, I think that with, with these words, I'm absolutely optimistic. I also wanted to thank you and to tell you that uh, we wish you the best for the new years that actually you are uh, <laughs> festive <laughs> in two days. I, exactly. I think that you say Frohes Neues Neues Jahr. No, Frohes Neues Jahr. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry for my accent. <laughs> Same to you. No, that's fine. That, that was uh, well understandable. <laughs> uh, I was I was looking for the Arabic version of it, but I I, I, don't I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I guess <laughs> so. I went to the German one. <laughs> yes, so, yes, yes. Happy New Year. Okay. Yes. Bye. Thank happy you, New Year. And bye, bye. Thank you very much again bye. for having the, for having me. This was a, a really a true honor, and I'm I'm really happy to to have uh, presented something to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay. See you. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.